To watch it is to cringe. Hits like this are shocking, and they've put concussions in the spotlight. But they can happen a lot earlier than during a career in the NHL, and not just in sports. One in 70 children brought to the emergency room is there because of a concussion. Young brains, hard knocks, potentially devastating consequences. Today, Canadian researchers have done something to reduce the impact the first guidelines of their kind to help diagnose and treat concussions in kids. The CBC's Alison Northcott has more. Oh, my finger. It's been a long recovery for 16-year-old Estelle Berlin after she hit her head during a ringette game in February. I had a headache and I was feeling nauseated. And I, had, I was confused. She had a serious concussion. For her dad, it was clear something was wrong. She was pale, she was barely moving, she was just looking down, staring in, in, in the vacuum. But what was less clear was what to do about it. You often see adults, but you may also see some kids. Now, researchers in Ontario have created guidelines to help families like Estelle's, laying out the do's and don'ts through the steps of recovery. There's been concussion um, recommendations that have been issued but most of them in the past have really focused on either adults or sport and kids can get concussions not only from sport but from other uh, types of injuries as well. The guidelines include tips to recognize concussion symptoms like sustained headaches, advice on when to see a doctor and how much time children need to recover. One of the things in the guidelines say well you're not going to stay in a dark room for weeks at a time but you can't go to the movies with your friends so what do you do and we give examples based on their stage of recovery for parents to look at. Researchers say children's brains are more fragile and take longer to recover from concussions than adult brains. It will disrupt learning, it will disrupt memory, attention, our ability to organize and sort information that's what we need to do in order to learn. So at this sports camp in Montreal, kids are monitored closely when they get hurt. The camp's athletic therapist says the guidelines will help staff take the right steps when kids have concussions. We'll give them more rest time, we'll be more aware of their symptoms and we'll, we'll check up with them on a daily basis rather than a weekly basis, for, for example, with adults. The guidelines also aim to prevent tragedies like what happened to 17-year-old Rowan Stringer. She died after a hit to the head on a rugby field in Ottawa just days after sustaining other hits during previous games. Researchers say parents, coaches and teachers need to know when it's safe for children to get back in the game. Other hand. For Estelle Berlin, it's been four months. I don't, like, I don't have a concussion anymore, so now I'm just trying to get back to my normal, normal life. So playing ringette and, you know, going out for runs. Based on those new guidelines, her doctor has given her the all clear to be active again, something she's happy to do now that she knows it's safe. Alison Northcott, CBC News, Montreal. All right, for more on this, we turn to our medical contributor, Dr. Danielle Martin. How important are these guidelines? I think they are important, and what's really important about them is they include advice not only for healthcare professionals, but also for parents, caregivers, and for schools and communities about how we can prevent, diagnose, and effectively treat concussions in kids. How are these kind of concussions in kids different than adult concussions? Oh, they're very different because, of course, the pediatric brain is still developing. And so um, a hit at the wrong moment in development, and especially we know for children who have more than one concussion under the age of 15, can have lasting effects on uh, neural and cognitive development. So it's a, it is really a different thing. You know, the big puzzle for a lot of parents is that they know their child has had a, a hit of some kind. Yeah. But they're not quite sure what they should be looking for to determine whether or not it really is a concussion. So what do they look for? Well, first of all, you don't actually have to hit your head to get a concussion. Uh, even a, a really uh, striking whiplash kind of movement can mm -hmm. cause a concussion-like effect. Uh, I think most people know if, you, if there's loss of consciousness, uh, if the child vomits on the field or feels nauseous or vomiting in the days afterwards, those are signs. But also dizziness. Uh, extreme fatigue and just sort of feeling unwell or not themselves, not just after the hit, but in the days following, should twig parents and families that it's important to bring your kid in to be seen by a health professional and that they shouldn't play until they've been assessed. All right. Dr. Martin, thanks very much. Thank you. Okay.